if you're just joining us in we originally lost voodoo duff pockets for kumba cabana but everything is back taking a look at the charts real quick it seems to be a close game but 1800 experience can start to snowball so we'll see if torch can really pick it up or if that dc or if kumba cabana can is going to be put back by that dc yeah i mean that experience lead is basically in the support role right that's pretty much the advantage that's out for uh torch right now and one glance is going to be able to take advantage of that he's quite a proficient adc player and so he's just sort of going to know how he can and how he cannot push his advantage and right now it's just by him soloing lane artemis has returned to base so one glance just picking up solo experience before the three minute mark is a big advantage for that adc and the thing about apollo the moment he gets so far ahead that you can't trade with him he is the best hunter in the game yeah, the, the audacity that allows his passive allows him to attack 50 percent faster is actually really really potent once those basic attacks start to come online oh yeah Debo glow's finished is almost good enough but obviously the second he touches rage you just really can't do anything about it so that's going to be kind of frightening and already level five to uh level four and two on artemis and and Bacchus respectively he's already taking an aggressive stance in the lane able to tank the front minions while basic attacking them down and he's already asserted his dominance on this lane I mean, let's be honest, he has the best global presence, and if he's beating you in lane 2, there's nowhere you can go that Apollo will not be able to get there and be better than you. So, very, very scary if he gets far ahead, and that means we're gonna need to see Ganks of the Toonbots, who is level 5, but his ultimate only just uh, coming online hasn't been able to use it yet. Left gold camp has gone down to Torch, and... Now headshot and Defoe heading into the middle lane. Probably not going to be able to get too much. They don't have a blink on their Ymir yet, but that's probably something they're going to want soon is Ymir Serket Gang's very Your strong. Ymir Serket Gang can be extremely strong, whether it's madness into an ultimate from Ymir or a freeze into a great deathbane coming out from the Serket. There's a lot of different ways you can hang that. And right on the left side, we're seeing some aggression from Kuba Cabana, but here comes Defoe trying to help out his Apollo. Six and six on them, six and three on the opponent so Bacchus really has to play this carefully because one glance as we talked about with Apollo already Your very strong and doesn't attack. even have the item finished yet oh in the solo lane though Sir Kett with the last breath on Aphrodite she's not gonna be able to heal madness Deathbane gets the kill headshot 1-0 first blood level 7 what more could you ask for delivery well, you can ask for a blue buff on the invade right there, and it looks like two members deep are going to go ahead and pick up this blue buff. Only one there is Lieutenant Snugglekins, and he's just not able to provide enough resistance. Level 5 on his speed buff, you know, if Torch wanted to be aggressive here, they really could just take it with Poseidon coming in the back, uh, coming up the middle lane. So a little, resi a little uh, restraint shown there by the members of Team Torch not invading on that speed buff as well, because that would have been a, that would have been a dead monkey, Kret. Yeah, I mean, Serket was out of mana, which is a bit of a downside, and so maybe Headshot... I mean, usually your jungler is the one calling jungle invades, so maybe he just didn't think about it because he didn't have the mana. But it definitely was an option if they got the rotation from the middle lane. Uh, support onto Snugglekins, maxing that Frost Strike, you can see the effect of it as besides taking damage as well. Good Kraken onto Vulture, and he's going to maybe take a tower hit no great uh backfire just to get him out of danger and no one dies in that explosive engagement beautiful aegis right there coming out of skinu the poseidon just barely able to activate it before the vulcan hit i mean that's not a rank three active that's oh skinu oh skinu <laughs> and vulture gets the double kill right there no aegis available to him right there as it's a level one aegis with 150 second cooldown so vulcan picks up the double in the middle lane while uh sniper falls down to the wayside in the solo lane so that's gonna be a four person a three person kill all aboard and torch leading the game four to zero yeah torch has a big advantage five to zero as one glance is able to take down pogue mahone on the way back into lane um so Chunga Aphrodite, we mentioned it in picks and bans, and that it's essentially an even match because there are so many different advantages and there's so much intricacy. But when the jungler comes and gets that first blood in the solo lane, it's no longer an even match. Actually, the duo lane, Voodoo Duffman going down to one glance, just picking up an easy, I guess, prolonged double. But um, yeah, now that Chunga has the advantage, she should just be able to press it and win the lane.
Yeah, I mean, that's definitely what we're gonna see, Chum guys, because we we were talking about the matchup and how intricate it is, and that's all assuming that it's evenly matched as far as experience is concerned as another kill goes down in the middle lane to the Vulcan. But again, that solo lane being ran by Chunga. Tower almost already down, and One Glance also running this duo lane. Seven Level 7 to level 10 are the Hunters, and One Glance has just been trading blows with this Artemis the entire time, really not able to have any pressure against him. So Poke Mahone just not able to do much against this level 10 Apollo with Devo Gloves already built and Audacity ready to go. Yeah, in the duel lane, there's just so much pressure on that Artemis Aphrodite going down again. And at this point, now that Bullet's level 11 up against a level 8 Aphrodite has that Divine Ruin online, often Divine Ruin start isn't, doesn't do enough, but when you're this far ahead, it certainly does. There is no sustain option for this Aphrodite. In the left-hand jungle, Poseidon getting zoned out by Bolt here. Torch is pushing their advantage, and they're pushing it perfectly. Here comes a Vulcan ult onto the left hand side. Beautiful belly flop out of Vol uh, Bacchus is going to prevent it. Good stun coming out from Defoe. Ultimate in the back line. That's going to take out Vulture. Bit off a little bit more than he can chew. Two members in blue. Not enough damage to take out Pogue Mahone. He's going to escape by the skin of his teeth. But wait. One glance in the air, looking for the kill in the back line. Lands in the back, gets the kill, but now he's surrounded. Good Mez looking for the kill onto Bacchus as well. Minion's gonna go ahead and block that out. Ultimate coming down from the monkey. Fear No Evil will spread the team out, but One Glance and Headshot are here, ready to fight. They're gonna turn around. He was stuck in between a rock and a hard place. He's gonna find himself under his own tower. And here comes the rest of Torch. The fact that they should be able to get problem. No big deal. You know, Zatman may no longer be the hunter for Dignitas, but his spirit lives on with that dive. And Torch actually did a great job of coming to help him out. Now, Headshot going down there, actually dying to only a tower. He did tower dive to get the kill on Poseidon, wasn't able to get out safely. Uh, Bulcher going down in a more legitimate fashion, actually giving Kumba Kamana a kill, but 11 to 1 and up. 7,000 gold, 13,000 experience. Torch. The moment they start taking tier 2 towers, they should just be able to keep that pressure going all the way to the throne. Yeah, I mean, we, we always make the joke about the Zapman dive or the Apollo or the, or the Apollo going too crazy, but I think this this situation, and it's intricate, so so bear with me as mid camps go down on the right side. This is only the second spawn past the original that are that, that are going to go the way of Torch. Uh, pause that thought real quick. Diving very deep in the enemy jungle. Ninja Hannah, very low. Defoe chasing. Great wall, great freeze. Is there any follow-up? Bullet gets the kill with the ultimate. And Defoe blows his to kill out Lieutenant Snugglekins. Two for O in the jungle. 13 to 1 is the total count. The important thing about the way Defoe is building Ymir, maxing Glacial Strike first. You don't need anyone else to follow up. You can follow up yourself. He's actually delaying uh, taking levels of his ultimate because it does enough base damage at rank one and maxing his sneeze second. Nice Vulcan ult in the center lane. Gonna pick up one kill. The second kill soon to come down. Headshot seeing that with an auto attack. Now 16 to one. And it looks like Kumba just were not able to come back from that early disadvantage. First gold fury of the game will be started and <laughs> will go down to Torch. I like what I'm seeing at Vulture, this Vulcan mid lane from Torch. One of the more, one of the things that a lot of players get blinded by when it comes to Vulcan is they see that text on the tooltip saying it does extra damage the further you're away. You don't have to be blinded by that. A lot of these Vulcan's ultimates have been more effective than the majority of ultimates we see out of Vulcan's in tournament play. And they're mid to close range, Cret. You're ensuring the damage rather than gambling on higher damage. And that's what's getting the kills. That, those two kills in the middle lane, mid-range Vulcan ult, sometimes that's all you need. Exactly, but uh, Bullet pushing up on the right-hand side, keeping up the pressure on Ninja Hannah. Now a six-level difference between those two players. And, no, well, Bullet no longer keeping up the pressure as he starts a recall. One glance on the left-hand side, though, should be able to get this tower as a lone Bacchus is not enough to defend against an Apollo. Right, and here, here's here's sort of what I was getting to as we see Apollo actually going to retreat because there's two other members, so that makes it three. Uh, he's going to have to be careful right here. <clears throat> when you're this far ahead, you sort of allow your hunter to really be that, that oh, yeah. crazy 
aggressive individual because he can put out that much damage. One glance being grassed on by three people, but he's level 14. He doesn't quite mind. Ultimate from Defoe is going to take out the enemy hunter. Only level 9. Three members deep are both teams. Voodoo Duffman taking a lot of damage. That initial DC hurting him. And one glance going to go ahead and pick up his fourth kill of the game. 4 0 and 3. Reach the slash line of the blue team's hunter. Well, it's also very important to mention that Apollo is the escape artist. He yes. is the slipperiest hunter in the game. There are a few characters slipperier, like um, debatable. I mean, it, it, even then, it's debatable, right? Like, Sir Cat has two dashes, and that's great. But Apollo has a global alt where he can just fly away. So, you know, maybe Yanis. Um, anyway, two inner towers left up. Bullet on the right hand side did just get a kill, and Chinga not the best tower killer a pretty good split pusher but um <laughs> we'll be able to get this one eventually i think his uh headshot is rotating over to help and Bulture and defoe just keeping everyone else under that middle tower torch is just squeezing the life out of kumba kabana i mean the teamwork around here is really impressive from torch as Bulture picks up another mid-range Vulcan ultimate kill. You know, the Torch is a team that we've seen around. They, they do come and they do have a fluctuating roster, so I will say that. But Torch has been around the tournament scene for a while, Craig. Can you remember the first time we really saw them in tournament play like this? In tournament play, it's been forever. It's been a, I mean, yeah. it's been all year. Um, and their roster has changed. This roster is recent ish. But I'd say the first real noteworthy appearance of Torch was in the SPL play-in, where they were one of the four teams. Oh, middle tower. Nice play from Vulture to get that first kill. With the Amir ult, it's going to slow everyone down. The dive from Bullet, missing the ultimate. Oh, no, and Vulture backfiring into the center of a crack hit. Mechanical mistakes, but not enough to actually drop any lives. This Torch is just too far ahead. Yeah, just just a little too much for Kuma Kamana to, to handle. But one of the things that I that I wanted to bring up about Torch is that this team looks very good, and they're definitely very good. But they're practiced, Kret. That's really what I want to mention. We see Torch come out, and they play against some of the bigger dogs, the Cognitive, the Dignitas, etc. And they do well. They might not always win, but but here is the result: playing and losing to those teams just incredible refinement on 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 the basics when it comes to farming and, and trying to win a game and 14 minutes in 800 damage on that all 14 minutes in we see a 20,000 gold five to one that is practice so if you're a team if you're a newer team out there take a look at what torch is doing and how they've done it this could be you yeah torch is just applying pressure perfectly this could be a waxing moon to find a kill on the Pogue Mahone. The Titan has been pulled, and I don't think they're going to go for it yet. Oh, they're going to go for it yet. Two Phoenixes are definitely killable right now, but they want to take it all, and they're just going to end up resetting it repeatedly. There we go. This is this is the real attempt. The foe coming in. He's tanking the Titan. It's only a Bacchus and a Poseidon who is going to be attempted to kill Titan at 50%, but headshots getting low will not quite die. Voodoo Duffman very low as well and will be forced back into the fountain as Torch is going to re-engage. Yeah, this Maybe might not. be a... Yeah, well, yeah. going to help. You She's level 18. Pope Mahone gets a kill. That's the second kill on the side of the red team, so that's going to be a good one as Vulcan falls down. Defoe looks like he wants to turn around, get a freeze, and get a deicide. One member... I, Pug Mahone, can't do much. Running into the wall, the level of Artemis sporting nothing but seven deaths and 35 stacks on those demons. Not able to stop this final push. Couple of knockups and CCs. That's going to be the death. That's going to be the deicide. And that's going to be the game. 16 minutes, 33 kills to three with over 20,000 gold in the lead for Team Torch. They start this tournament off with a bang. And the blue team takes this one in spades.